Okay, so the first Nightfall to land in Destiny 2 is called The Arms Dealer. My goal out of making this video is to help the Destiny community as much as I can to be able to beat this Nightfall. I know a lot of you have jobs and you have school to attend, so finding time to grind Destiny 2 and also focus on your responsibilities can be kind of tricky. So hopefully these tips and cheeses that I show you end up, you know, making you be able to complete this. Good luck everybody, and if you find this enjoyable, consider leaving a like, because this is going to take a while to put together, and your guys' support will always be greatly appreciated. Anyways, to start this off, let's go over the basics. When you go into, you know, a regular Nightfall, not the prestigious Nightfall, I'm not exactly sure if the prestigious Nightfall is going to have, like, alternate burn damage that will become available. Either way, these tips and cheeses that I'll be showing you, I'm definitely gonna be using in the prestigious Nightfall. These are extremely useful. So anyways, while you're doing the regular Nightfall, you will have burns that will randomly pop up above your super. Void, Solar, and Arc. They will alternate, so it's good to discuss to your fire team what's going on and who has what, so you don't have to constantly switch. Such as one of your fire team members have a powerful, you know, Arc power weapon, and another one has a powerful solar power weapon, etc. Also, if you guys are able to, maybe you can even be different subclasses too. So when Void comes around, you know, someone has a Void subclass, and you get the point. The deeper I get into this tutorial, the more I'll show you strategic tips to save as much time as possible, because time is crucial in the Nightfall as well in Destiny 2. Taking out majors and ultras give you plus 7 seconds and regular enemies give you plus 2. At around one of the first big encounterments here in the Nightfall, after you know the ghost opens up the door after you know taking out the very first encounterment, which really isn't that difficult to take on, the next one can be kind of slow. So you want to pay attention to what comes up for the burn damage. I really don't have any like cheeses for this beginning spot right here until you pick up the solar charge that you need to deposit into the next section. I wouldn't even really call this a cheese, honestly. It's a very useful tip, though. When you pick up the solar charge, in case you guys don't know, it works similar to the relic. You want to melee with it to speed up your character so you can get to the area where you can deposit the solar charge as fast as possible. If you do this, you can beat the enemies that spawn around into the next part and be able to simply deposit it. And once you do that, you want to immediately group back up with your fire team, unless your fire team is running with you, which I hope they are not because there are a group of enemies that spawn on this bridge here before you, you know, go drop off this solar charge. But if you're fast enough with it, you can get to the area where you have to slam it and really not have to worry about the enemies at first. But when you do slam it, whoever's using the solar charge wants to turn around and help with enemies that you know you skipped. So then at this part, of course, you want to pay attention to what comes up for the burn damage. I suggest you know calling out too because some people miss what pops up. I know I do, and I know there's probably some other people out there that do as well. Actually, when I was first doing this nightfall, I had no idea these you know power burn damages even popped up. Like this is something new in Destiny. I mean, before we just had like a set in stone burn damage. Now it's like, uh, what's going to pop up next, you know? Anyways, when you get it past this part, you'll take on a few other enemies, and then you'll finally get to an area where you can spawn your Sparrow. Now I'm about to say a pretty big spoiler about the story, so if you guys don't want to know this, click away from this video now. I'm just warning you. But you unlock a Sparrow after you complete the story. So yeah, just in case you guys don't know how to get the Sparrow, once again, I'm trying to give you guys this information for the ones that really don't have much time to grind. So I'm sure some of you watching this might not even have your Sparrow unlocked. Once again, my first time going through this, I had no idea I could even spawn my Sparrow at this part. So I was just trying to fight through these enemies when you really don't have to. Once again, the Nightfall is all about being efficient with your time. So here, you want to boost with the Sparrow until you get into the next area. This next area is where two tanks will spawn and the first cheese that I'll be showing you guys. There is a method that you can do to take out this first tank by going up here in this area, as you can see my buddy is doing, and activating this thing that is on top of this platform over here. I believe the tank has to be in a certain location though for it to take effect against it, but it does some heavy damage. I'm not exactly sure what happens. I think an explosion hits the tank or something. Once again, though, some heavy damage can be done against the tank with this. So the first tank is easy peasy. Even if you don't activate the thing, this tank is supposed to be the easy one. Now this next one is a really interesting cheese that was introduced to me by one of my buddies, and he accidentally found this by being 
pushed away from the tank. I want to give a big thanks to one of my new clan members in Unusual Insight named Crynex for finding out this cheese and sharing it with me. That's how he got accepted into my clan. He accidentally found this cheese and decided to share it with me so I can pass it along to the community to help you all out as much as possible. I'm going to tell you guys, this is way overpowered to destroy the tank. I feel like this can help a lot of the community out, especially in the prestigious knife wall. I know I'm going to be trying to use this. As you guys may know, if you've done this, a tank comes down from an elevator here after you take out the first one. What you want to do instead of taking the left path up and having to take on some fallen enemies, you want to instead go up these side support beams because there's a little section in here where you can shoot through and the tank nor enemies of the cabal can hit you. Well, I take that back. The cabal enemies can sometimes be able to get you, but they're pretty easy to take out inside here. And you can also easily back off if you feel like you're about to go down. There's two back support beams on the far right that you can take up, so keep that in mind. So yeah, this little crevice right here that you can go in is a great area to take out the tank. As you can see here, the tank was drained because you can still be able to see its critical spots. And once again, it's not going to be able to hit you. So you don't even have to worry about it. All you got to do is, you know, make sure your aim's up and you're able to hit those criticals. So yeah, this is an extremely useful cheese to make this little boss fight way more easier. And you're also being efficient with your time by doing this as well. Because you don't have to technically go fight those fallen enemies on the far left. You can just take this right path by going up these support beams and using this little crevice area to take out you know the tank make sure you don't go onto the left side support beams of this elevator just because if you do well you're not really that safe because once again the fallen enemies are still over there at the left side so they're going to be able to shoot you when you're trying to cheese this tank so now let's get into the next part once you finally taken out the tank and you progressed a little further where you have to you know call the elevator and it'll take you up but first you have to take out all the enemies here there is a way to get your allies to join you immediately up at the very top without even having to ride the elevator as you can see here it's like a ladder was perfectly made for this scenario honestly this is what brings the elevator up but you can use this to climb all the way to the top i will say it's more efficient if you do it with a sword just because you could see more of what you're doing and not all players have to do this this is what makes this cheese extremely useful and you save a lot of time instead of just waiting for that elevator to slowly take you to the very top instead as long as one person works their way up to the top by the way once you reach the very top you're going to have to jump to the left over here and grapple onto this little ledge and then from here you can jump all the way up now i am the one that found out this little method that you can do to save time unfortunately what i had in my mind didn't end up working i thought i was going to be able to just reach the very top up here no problem instead there was a turn back and i was like oh dag on it well this sucks that failed but no turns out once you go down from the turn back your orb stays up here. So while your partners are down low, and as soon as they activate the elevator and take out you know, whatever enemies are remaining, they'll immediately join allies at the top up here, which once again saves you time because now they don't have to ride that elevator at all and wait for it to slowly reach the top. No, you can immediately start doing damage against the boss. And once again, as we know, time is crucial in the nightfall. So anything that can save a bit of time is definitely handy to do. And by the way, try not to pay too much attention to my time during this nightfall. The reason why is because we were practicing and looking around for methods. Trust me, we had plenty of time to spare, but instead we decided to spare our time trying to look for other methods to do. And I will say, of course, your first time attempting all these tricks might not be the best. But the more you do it, and the more you get these down, the more you'll understand each trick and how it works, and you know, you'll do them for the most part without failing. So yeah, that's really all I found for cheeses and like tactics to be efficient with your time as much as possible through this nightfall. But with these tactics, this should be able to help you guys out because it helped me out, and I'm hoping what helped me out ends up, you know, helping you all out as well. Now, in case you guys don't know how to take on this boss. There's going to be stages where once you do enough damage against him, he'll go up to the top left and top right pillars. And once again, you want to be paying attention to the burn damages because that is very important 
to take this boss out as fast as possible in the nightfall. So once he goes up to the top left or type right pillar, you want to take this solar charge and dunk it into the flames on the right or left side. Just depends on you know what top panel he is at way up there shielded. Keep that in mind. These solar charges will only spawn once the boss is shielded up either in the top left or top right panel. And this will deactivate his shield and he'll come back down where you can once again do more damage. So you just want to really rinse and repeat this and try to, you know, of course stay alive here and take out the boss. So yeah, this is all the tips that I have for y'all. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and once again, it ends up helping y'all out. This is something that I decided to compile together for the Destiny community for the ones that are struggling with the Nightfall. And I know there are quite a few out there because once again, you know, there's other responsibilities people are taking on besides just grinding Destiny 2. I'm out of here though, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. And it'd be very much appreciated if you could take just a little bit of your time and leave a like. And hey, maybe share this with some of your buddies so, you know, they know the tactics of what to do so you don't have to really explain all that much. And then when you guys go into the nightfall, you'll, you know, pretty much know what to do with these strategies that you can use to be more efficient with your time. Speaking of time though, I am heading out officially now. Toodles.